Hey everyone, welcome back. Grateful to have you guys tuning in for today's message. And today I want to talk about the eight different strategies uh, for getting love, or you could call it survival. Uh, we could venture into this in a number of different angles, but I want to go seriously deep with you guys on this one today. Um, so as usual, I'd love if you guys are playing along at home, let me know where in the world you are tuning in from and join in the conversation. And also if you've got any questions that come up, any words of wisdom that you want to share, uh, now is the time to uh, join in the conversation. And I, as usual, I will be getting back to each and every one of you in the comments um, straight after I just talk into this concept and want to hear your thoughts. So today's message is actually for every single one of us, every single human being walking the face of the planet. And the reason is, is because at the end of the day, below the surface of all of our individuality, our personalities, you know, all the ways that we see ourselves as being uh, different and unique uh, to other people, uh, this message is actually going to get a lot deeper into basically what we share on a very deep human level. And when I talk about a very deep human level, I'm talking actually about our shared deepest fears and our shared deepest uh, desire, all right, or purpose uh, in life. So this one will be going very deep, um, but I want to introduce you guys, if you haven't heard of an amazing system that gives so much uh, perspective for all of us who are on our personal development journeys, there is a, a system of learning about our humanness and how we show up in different strategies to get love or for survival. Uh, that uh, framework that I'm going to touch upon today uh, and give you some you know, insights into is called the Enneagram. Okay, and it's been around for thousands and thousands of years. And basically, it is a model of human personality. It's a model of basically looking at uh, how we all and each of us, uh, because of our shared deepest fears and because of our shared deepest desires, which I'm going to start with um, talking about with you guys today, we all uh, get these sort of strategies and they can sit, be seated in eight different categories. I'm not going to go even deeper than that because basically it goes much deeper than what I'm going to um, speak into with you guys today. But just as an introductory sort of lesson on this one, uh, I definitely, definitely want to, um, uh, I definitely want to share this one with you guys. So uh, let's let's get into it. So uh, today I am going to be talking to you guys about. Honoring the authenticity that is behind your strategy to get love. And I'd absolutely love for you guys who are tuning in right now to do share this message. Uh, this is a powerful one, like I said, for every single one of us who ultimately wants to escape or negate the deepest human fear and actually uh, free ourselves to be truly authentic in this world and drop our strategies to get love, acceptance, approval, belonging, and actually step forward and shine bright in who we actually are and what we're actually inspired by. All right. All about honoring our authenticity. So let's start at the top and let's talk about uh, you may have heard this, I've definitely mentioned this a million times before uh, over the years, but you may have heard this, you may have not. But basically, I like to look at our shared humanness because we could talk all day long about how different we are and, you know, how we're right and other people are wrong and all that, you know, BS, right, that takes up a lot of our energy. And basically, I want to look at, well, okay, yes, given that we all show up in this unique expression, right, of our own humanness, what is it that we actually share? What is the commonality? And we want to go super deep and granular on this. Uh, and basically, the, the thing that we all share as human beings is that we have this biggest fear of not being good enough in some way, shape or form, right? And that not being good enough um, basically stems from the deeper fear that we're not 
not lovable as we are, right? We basically have a very conditional self-esteem, right? We've got lots of conditions that we feel we need to meet in the world, in the external world, in order to be a valuable, worthy, lovable, uh, accepted, approved of, loved human being, right? And so basically, this is a strategy for survival because if we're not lovable as a little baby, right, where we have to have all of our needs taken care of, of somebody who loves us enough to, you know, put their life on hold and actually take care of us, we wouldn't survive, right, if we didn't have that. And we have that deeply ingrained in our biology. And so our deepest part of our humanness is to want to be lovable so that we can actually survive in this world, right? Connection, love, very, very deeply ingrained in our sense of safety and survival and, you know, through belonging. Okay, and so basically what this shared shared fear does, like the fear of not being lovable, it's also connected to a shared desire. You know, each and every human being, no matter whether they consciously are aware of it or they say it or they don't, um, basically we all want to just be loved and accepted for who we are. And we want to be able to experience that feeling of loving other people to that depth, right? So we want to be loved and accepted and we want to love and accept right and so basically that's the underpinning for what I want to talk about with you guys which is really really valuable if you're somebody who is on a massive personal uh, journey for personal growth self-actualization reaching your potential all of that amazing great stuff right to honor your authenticity to deepen your intimacy and ultimately contribute meaningfully and purposefully and make a meaningful difference with your life right so that you can get to the end and be totally regret free you know totally inspired fulfilled by the life that you've lived and the person that you've shown up as so let's look at the eight different strategies that we can categorize all human you know trying all humans as a strategy to get that love acceptance and approval right to negate that that shared fear that we're not good enough we're not lovable you know and that conditional self-esteem we have these eight different categories that you know time and time again this just shows up right and I'm, I'm hoping what I'm going to share with you guys today you might be able to see yourself in one of these eight categories as um, in particular all right now basically these eight categories are these kind of archetypes right they're these uh, sort of ways of being in the world that are ultimately uh, you know using our personality as a defensive structure to get love right to prove that we're worthy to prove that we're lovable so that we can ultimately survive all right so i want you to hear each of these eight and i'd love to hear from you in the comments drop me um, a comment and let me know which of these might resonate with you or maybe you're picking it up for somebody else in your life so i'm just going to briefly run over these um, but basically, the first strategy of love that a major, like a lot of people fall into, not a majority, it's kind of evenly, quite evenly split, but is the type one they call the reformer. Now, this particular personality type um, actually shows up as very rational, very principled, very self-controlled, right? That's the kind of uh, way of being in the world. Very, I'm right, you're probably wrong, don't worry, I'm going to reform you, right? It's all about being perfect. Um, and they have this inner sense and drive to perfect others, to perfect the world, uh, to think that, you know, their way is the right way and they need everybody to reform to it. Okay, and that's actually a strategy for proving their worth, right? Each and every one of these eight different strategies that I'm talking into with you guys is to prove their worth, right? Remember, uh, when we are not conscious, when we are not doing our work as the human beings that we are, we unconsciously are driven by that deepest fear of not being lovable. And if we're not lovable, we won't survive, right? What's the point in living? Uh, and basically, we all share that desire to be loved and accepted, right? And the our authenticity gets kind of locked under, you know, right at the core, but we put this 
kind of uh, defensive structure as the personality. And this is just one of those strategies. So that first one, the type one, the reformer, um, you know, as I said, very rational principles, self-controlled, uh, wants to reform the world, wants to perfect everything. And that's their strategy of, yeah, proving their worth in the world so that they will ultimately be lovable and survive. The second type, the number two on what's called the Enneagram is called the helper. Now, these people have adopted a strategy for their personality. Remember, the core authenticity is within, but if you have conditional self-esteem, you think you're not lovable as you are. You think that you need to adopt a strategy, and all human beings do this. We think we need to adopt a strategy in order to get love, in order to get that acceptance, approval, belonging, and so forth, right, and survive in the world. And so what the helpers do is their personality is more uh, kind of very caring, very generous. Um, it, it actually gets very possessive as well, uh, but they have the name the helper, right? Um, and so their strategy for proving their worth in the world is to be super helpful, right? And very self-sacrificing a lot of the times on the out, outset. Um, it looks like, you know, they want to help, 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 help. They want to give, 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 um, but definitely have a hard time receiving because they feel like their sense of value as a human being is in how they help. And so they don't want you to help them. They want to be the helper, right? Because that's their strategy for survival and to get love and acceptance and approval, right? The third type in the Enneagram is called the Achiever, right? And this type um, is very adaptable. They tend to be super ambitious um, and very image conscious, right? And this type is uh, actually my type, I'm not gonna lie, right? So the Enneagram, I will say, is something that kind of slaps you in the face um, on your personal development journey. A lot of what we wanna look into is what's great and brilliant about us, the Enneagram, Kind of identifies and highlights our blind spots and the stuff that we wouldn't want the rest of the world to really know about. Um, but these types, you know, their sense of worth and value is very much connected to their sense of achievement, right? So all of these types kind of got a message, uh, at, in, you know, during childhood about who they needed to be in order to get love, right? And the achievers were really rewarded for what they did, not for who they were, but for what they did, what they achieved, right? So um, we can also look at, I won't go too deep into this, but we can also look at different cultures across the globe and um, different cultures kind of uh, relate to these archetypes as well. And the Western world, particularly the US, is a very three culture, right? Achieve, succeed, get the goal, um, ambition, drive, right? Accomplishment. Um, and so, yeah, that's the type three strategy is to achieve in order to prove their worth and their value uh, at, you know, at the expense of their authenticity, at the expense of uh, their um, emotions. And, you know, you guys have been following me for a long time. You know that I drum home authenticity so much. It's so important to me because I know what it is to be a type three in the Enneagram for the majority of my life who thought my value and worth wasn't about the truth of who I is, who I was, um, you know, who I is, who I was, and uh, and basically not my emotional connection either, right? And um, and I know what that emptiness feels like, right? So that's why one of the major reasons I'm so passionate about showing up and being authentic and also helping others to discover who they are, what they want and have the courage to pursue it, right? But we want to identify where we're situated in our um, defensive strategy to get love, acceptance and approval because below that, when we can identify the patterns, we get to go below that to get to the core of our authentic nature and oftentimes discover ourselves maybe for the first time, right? So that's why I look at these personality frameworks um, with such importance, right? Because they give us an, um, an inf information about what's not us, right? So that we can remove that which is not us so that we can go about actually discovering the truth of who we are. All right, so that's a type three. The type four 
is known as the individualist. And basically uh, the type four is very intuitive. They're very aesthetic. They're very, tend to be kind of self-absorbed, right? They want to be um, the most individual, right? They want to be different to everybody else. And they tend to be quite deep into their emotions as well, right? And so um, this is the individualist has adopted a strategy to be different from everybody else, uh, basically in order to get love, to prove that they're valuable, to prove that they're worth it, right? And so that is the type four. The type five is known as the investigator. And the type five um, is very perceptive. They tend to be super innovative, um, but they can be quite detached. And basically, uh, they, you know, they're, they're, they can get into this kind of mentality of feeling as though they're going to lose a lot of energy um, connecting a lot with others. And they feel like they need to research and know um, expertise to the absolute depth right? They want to be the expert, right? And that is why, you know, partly why they're called or known as the investigator. And basically, that's their strategy. Again, right? As we've all got these strategies to uh, prove our sense of value in the world, these people tend to be, um, yeah, very intelligent. They rely very deeply on their um, IQ, right? Their mental intelligence. Um, and uh, yeah, and want to go very deep and be an expert in some field usually, right? Uh, the type, uh, so that was type five, the type six is the loyalist. Now, this particular strategy that um, actually a majority of the population um, are situated in this type six one. And basically, um, the loyalist is very, they tend to be very engaging, they tend to be very responsible, but they can be quite defensive. And the reason why they're called the loyalist is because they adopt a strategy for survival, uh, for being very loyal to people that they perceive could protect them because they have a lot of fear, right, in the world. And they want security, they want safety. And so they tend to gravitate towards um, people or groups or communities at large um, or institutions that they feel they could belong to and that will help, they'll be protected. So they tend to be super loyal to those people or organizations or institutions uh, in order to feel a sense of safety and security and ultimately uh, uses their strategy to get love, acceptance and approval by being super loyal. All right. So that is the type six. The type seven is the enthusiast. Now, the type seven tends to be super upbeat. They tend to be quite accomplished, but they can be very impulsive. And the type seven has adopted a strategy for getting that love, acceptance and approval by being, you know, really enthusiastic, you know, kind of like the cheerleader, right? The cheerleader of everything, uh, very optimistic, always looking on the bright side, right? That's their strategy to get that love, acceptance and approval. Uh, so that's their strategy. And then uh, we've got the type eight. Sorry, I think I was saying the type there were eight different types. There's actually nine. So I've got an extra bonus one there for you. Sorry. The type eight is known as the challenger. And basically the challenger tends to be very self-confident, very decisive, and can oftentimes be very domineering, right? They've got a lot of energy. Um, they've got a lot, um, you know, they, they want to dominate the, um, the, the arena, right? The environment. They want to, they're very connected to strength and weakness, right? And they don't want to be weak. They don't want to be vulnerable. They want to be super strong. They want to be powerful. Um, these types can be kind of the bullies, as well, right? Um, they don't have to be. Remember, each of these types has an has a level of health as well, I will say, right? They can be super unhealthy and unconscious, but you can gravitate and you can go to the higher side of each of these types. But the, the idea for this message is to just be able to get a taste and a flavor of what type you may actually be, um, because it is a great pathway to actually, uh, you know, removing the outward layer and actually getting to the core of who you are, right? Right? Honoring your authenticity. All right, so that's the challenger. They've adopted a strategy to get that love, acceptance, approval, prove their worth, right? Um, by being the challenger, the dominator, uh, the strong. Um, we've got the type nine, and that was funny because my mum is.
me, right? So it's funny. Anyway, she knew I must be talking about this. I nearly forgot about her, which is quite funny because the type nine is oftentimes uh, feeling kind of more like a wallflower. They kind of felt like they were past, right? And so the type nine is actually called the peacemaker. And the peacemaker is very receptive. They're very reassuring, um, but they can be kind of complacent, right? They, um, you know, they, they don't want to rock the boat, right? They want to, um, you know, they don't want to rock the boat. They want to keep the peace uh, and all of that great stuff. And that is ultimately their strategy um, for getting love, acceptance and approval. All right. So and surviving and proving that they're valuable, right? By not rocking the boat, by making sure, you know, there's giving reassurance and, uh, you know, basically being being re very receptive and open. All right, so that is just a really, really, really quick overview um, over the nine different types. Oh my gosh, I can't believe I was saying eight, but the nine different types or nine different strategies that us humans engage in. Now, we can engage in all of those different strategies at different times, right? But we tend to have one of these, well, we do really have one of these that is super ingrained in who we are. Now, without going into the depth of this right now, because this is a very deep framework and I've given you just like the simplest, easiest kind of surface level explanation to give you a little taste and a flavor. Um, but basically, if you would like to go super deep on this, it actually breaks down into 27 different types. And I actually find that these nine types can be really valuable first step into this um, place of self-discovery and self-development. Um, but then we want to go even deeper than that. And I have developed three very deep diving masterclasses on this framework that actually help you to identify your true type, right? And remember the personality is a defensive structure that you've created that is hiding away the truth of who you are, right? As a strategy to prove that you're valuable because you've got conditions on your self-esteem, right? And so basically what we want to do to help you be your most fulfilled individual, your most free individual, right? We want to help you get to the core of who you are, to know who you are, to know what you want and to have the courage and the confidence to actually go after it and make your life matter, right? To be able to honor your authenticity, deepen your intimacy and contribute meaningfully and purposefully to make Make your life matter, right? And so uh, the personality framework of the Enneagram and the deep dive trainings that I've created in the Limitless Potential mo monthly masterclasses, they actually will give you such an avenue for your growth and your development and your self-awareness will up level tenfold, right? So for anybody who would like to join that, I have put a link um, in the comment section. Um, if you want to check that out, if you have any questions whatsoever, you can always reach out to me. Um, I'm here to support you and uh, everything that I do is here to develop, you know, different trainings and different ways to simplify all the amazing information and systems out there that are here to support you to become your most authentic and fulfilled self. All right. So I love getting to help and support you guys on that journey. So as I said, reach out and I'd love to see you guys in the Limitless Potential Academy uh, where we get to meet and connect every month on Zoom as well, uh, get to help and support you personally, and you get to join an amazing group of individuals who are all reaching for a new level of their potential and they want to support, challenge and encourage you to do the same. All right. So um, let me check in with you guys. I'd love to connect. So drop me a comment. Let me know again where in the world you're tuning in from. And if you've got any questions or words of wisdom that you'd love to, um, you know, share, or if you found your type, I'd love to hear from you guys. If you think you might know, or if you want more information on any of these types, right? So let me check in. I've got Brian here and Jake Castillo and Tammy from Melbourne, Australia in my hometown. I love it, Tammy. Good to see you. And Eleanor's here as well and Honey and Daniel and Jake Castillo. Hello, Vanessa. Havia. I always forget. I, I nearly can't call you something else. So I didn't didn't want to do it. Havia, Havia, Havia. All right. From San Diego. Um, thank you so much for being here, my friend. And Samuel's here. And uh, Swapnil. Hello to you. Good to have you. And Susan's 
Cynthia and Brandon. Hello to you, my friend. And Dennis. Hey, superstar, right back at you. And Darren's here as well. And Lindsay and So. And uh, happy holidays to you as well, Heavier. Um, great to have you here. And Renee's here and Kenny and Tina and Samuel. Fear of being abandoned by the tribe. Absolutely. Right. And this is actually just a natural part of our development as human beings. We all have this need, you know, to belong. Right. That's just one level of development. But at some stage, we don't want to we want to wake up to the fact that we could be sacrificing the truth of who we are just to belong and how empty that is. We've all heard the saying, you know, that you can you know, feel you're most alone even when you're being surrounded by a group of people. Right. And that sense of emptiness and aloneness is because you're not connected to the one person that it really matters, which is yourself. Right. So love that, Samuel. Absolutely true. And Paul's here as well. And Hannah and Robert and Bill. Much love to you, my friend. And Maria and Sema and Dorothy and Dennis. You think you have the two. Yeah, I love it. A lot of people that I get to connect with, a lot of you guys tend to be um, the beautiful twos, those helpers. Um, and remember, each of the Enneagram types, they have, you know, this beautiful light side, this virtuous side, and they also have the dark shadow side, right? And when we're unconscious, it tends to be in the dark shadow side, uh, and particularly if we're not doing any self-development or self-awareness work. Um, but if we can identify, you know, which strategy we engage in, it gives us such a leg up um, to fast track our own fulfillment and success in uh, discovering who we are, what we want, and having the courage to go after it and live uh, a fulfilling existence that's authentic to us. So love that, Dennis. And uh, Bill, at a party, reading your lips. I love it, Bill. Have fun. Um, I know you guys in the States are celebrating Thanksgiving. So happy Thanksgiving to all of you guys. Hope you have an amazing time with family and friends and all the rest of it. Bill, I know you'll be partying it up. So that's great. And uh, Tarab is here as well. And Tammy, you're a nine. Okay, I love it. I love that you've identified that as well. Do you know some of my favorite people in this world are type nines? As I mentioned before, my mum is a type nine and um, beautiful, very friendly people. The challenge and the shadow for them is becoming complacent uh, in their own life, right? And so, um, yeah, love that, um, Tammy. Thanks for um, playing along at home today and letting us know. And Samuel, I must be an oddball helper and loyalist. I love it. Well, I won't go too deep into it at the moment, but there are some connection points with the different types. So you might find yourself in a couple of them, um, but really lean into um, you know these types. And as I said, if you wanna go deep and really get maximum value from this and apply it to your life so that you can fast track your own growth, your own fulfillment, you definitely want to join us in the Limitless Potential Academy. Um, and like I said, the link is in the comments. And uh, Georgina is here as well. And Mufasa. Good to see each and every one of you guys. I hope that today's message has served you, has resonated with you. If it has been of value, please do share it. And um, I love, love, love each and every one of you guys for showing up today. Um, I so appreciate the contributions that you make to these conversations. And uh, yeah. Much love to each and every one of you guys. And my message, as always, is to honor your authenticity, to deepen your intimacy. You know, don't stay on the surface. Really go deep with this uh, ability to love and accept yourself and others, right? And also, you know, make your life matter, right? Make a meaningful contribution and get purposeful and meaningful in your life, all right? And those are the areas that I absolutely specialize in. So um, for any of you guys who would like any further help, you can always reach out to me. All right, so much love for each and every one of you guys, and I will see you very soon. Much love.